These are 10 WCW tag teams that you've probably forgotten in no particular order. Let's go. Buddy Lee Parker and James Earl Wright first started teaming together in 1989, and they were pretty much prolific jobbers for the first couple years of their tag team career. Well, pretty much all their career, but you see where I'm going with this. In 91 and 92, they spent some time with All Japan Pro Wrestling, but most of their time there was also spent, you guessed it, losing matches. After a couple of year absence, they resurfaced once again in WCW in early 19. Shortly after that, Buddy Lee Parker was summoned to run the WCW power plant, but the team would stay semi-active throughout the next couple of years, mainly appearing on episodes of WCW Saturday Night, and yes, you guessed it, still losing plenty of matches. Anyone who saw these matches would have been an early supporter of the defund the police movement. Robbie Rage and Kenny Chaos, as they were known, the tag team of High Voltage, Danger High Voltage, real life best friends who decided to enroll at the WCW power plant together and they were teamed up and trained up and then a couple years later WCW spit them out into the world. I think a lot of people thought they were neat because they came out of the WCW power plant and had kind of a cool look and even though they were pretty much perennial jobbers, they were a pair of guys that a lot of fans actually could see something happening with at some time in the future. Well, that never really happened unless you want to count the time that Robbie Rage got hurt and Chaos filled in as one half of the tag team champions with Rick Steiner. That's pretty much the farthest the guys got. In late 98, the team split. Chaos was retired by the time the 2000s came around, but Robbie Rage continued to work the indies all the way up until around 2007. This was a thrown together tag team by WCW right around the mid 90s of Mean Mike Enos and Dirty Dick Slater. In the middle of their time teaming together, WCW or whoever changed Enos' name to The Mauler. And according to their cage match here, they only worked together a documented 21 times, last appearing on WCW Pro on October 27th, 1996, losing to Harlem Heat. So in the 80s, you had the Fabulous Ones with Stan Lane and Steve Kern. You also had the Midnight Express with Bobby Eaton and Dennis Condry. And later on, you would have a version of the Midnight Express that featured Bobby Eaton with Stan Lane. So naturally, when the two found themselves together in WCW in 1994, someone got the idea of putting these two guys together. And so they formed this team called Bad Attitude, having their first match on on March 24th, 1994, by defeating Bobby Walker and Brian Armstrong on an episode of WCW Saturday Night. From there, they would win their next few matches together. After that, the wins got pretty slim. We have 16 documented television matches of the two working together, and most of them ended up in losses. They're an interesting team to talk about because they're kind of one of those teams that's not going to make any top 100 best tag team lists. They're not going to make any top 100 worst tag team lists either. Just a couple serviceable guys doing their job in the mid 90s. It's easy to see how they could be easily forgotten. We knew these guys as the Quebecers in WWE. It had been a few years since we had seen them when they resurfaced in WCW in 1996. And of course, they couldn't be the Quebecers anymore, so they became the amazing French Canadians. Flanked by Colonel Robert Parker, who would dress up in a very laughable French Legionnaire type gimmick, which was the furthest thing from himself as a Southern Colonel. So, of course, comedy would ensue. This run with WCW lasted roughly a year and then they were back to the WWE so it's easy to see why this team at least by this name is easily forgettable. 
David Sierra and Ricky Santana first started teaming up in 1987 as the Cuban Connection. And naturally, eight years later, when they found themselves both at WCW, they were linked up once again. Sometimes listed as the Barrio Brothers, sometimes listed as Los Especialistas. The team was used as mostly an afterthought jobber tag team in WCW, even though that's probably where they're most famous from. In the 2000s, the team resurfaced in IWA Puerto Rico, once again as the Cuban Connection, and later on with the World Wrestling Council, which is also a Puerto Rican promotion. In those territories, the team found a lot more success. WWE gets a lot of flack for their everyday man job gimmicks, but everyone forgets that WCW took it to a whole new level with men at work. No, not I come from a land down under men at work. I'm talking about Chris Canyon and Mark Starr. Fun fact, this team won exactly three televised matches on WCW television. Luckily, the plug was pulled in the spring of 1996 after just a few months as this team, Chris Canyon would go on to bigger and better things as Mortis and later on as Canyon. Mark Starr, well, not so much. No, I'm not talking about Stars and Stripes, which was actually a semi-forgotten about team itself, which featured the Patriot Marcus Alexander Bagwell. No, we're talking about the one and only team hailing from WCW Special Forces, the Patriots. There was Todd Champion, who dressed himself up like a Patriot, hence the patriotic ring gear, and his partner, apparently some type of firefighter named Firebreaker Chip. It's not a joke. His name was Firebreaker Chip. Unlike a lot of the teams on this list, this team actually had a ton of matches from 1991 to 1992 on WCW television. And while they lost a lot, there was some pockets of time where they actually won a lot, too. It's actually quite fascinating. After the team split, Todd Champion would do a lot of work over in Japan and ended up retiring in 2002. Firebreaker Chip worked the Indies all the way until the year 2000. This team has kind of a weird history. They were first known as the Texas Hangmen, and most of their early matches were at WCW house shows in the year of 1993 and 94. From there, they did a little tour of the IWA Japan in 1995. In between tours, they had a little appearance on a WCW TV taping before going back to Japan. They did some Puerto Rico stuff. Then we started seeing them pretty regularly regularly on WCW TV in the summer of 1997. Then on October 28th, 1997, they first appeared on WCW Saturday Night as Disorderly Conduct. Of course, I was very disappointed to find out that there was never a match contested between Disorderly Conduct and the State Police. I can't help but think that this was an opportunity missed by all. These guys first showed up in Global in the spring of 1993. They were pretty much just a couple colossal guys that would be brought in for some baby faces to beat. Most of us know them from when they first started showing up in WCW in June of 1993, where they actually won their first couple matches. They actually won more matches than they lost on television in 1993 and 1994 overall. They were last used by WCW in December of 1993. From there, they did some stuff with Global again and CWF and also the rebooted version of World Class that took place in the late 90s. Looks like they last tagged together on an indie show in the year of 1999. That's it. That's my list. That's who I got. Who do you got? Hit me up with your most favorite random forgotten tag teams from WCW down in the comments. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe Subscribe to the channel, leave a like on your way out. We'll see you next time right here on Pro Wrestling Planet.